Welcome to Distorted Opinions. I'm Kayla, and this week I'm with Matt and Ted. And we're, we're finally all back together again. That's... I feel like we had a couple of sessions. We weren't all together. I agree. Well, the audience probably doesn't know that because we filmed a couple of them out of order. So we did a couple that were not in order. But as far as our audience is concerned, they're probably going to see like you two in your gear talk last mm-hmm. week. Mm-hmm. And then this one. And then next week, they'll see me and Matt without Ted. So that's right. Yeah. At so least for we us, it was a weird thing. Copyright flag. It's too, oh. it's too good <laughs> for the video. It's... Yeah, I just silence. <laughs> I just muted. That's right. <laughs> what was that? Did something happen to the audio there? Uh, no, no. Matt just got muted because we got uh, we got a, a copyright infringement censorship. So, that's right. Gotta love it. Um, I was spent. so. This week, um, we're going to talk about a topic that will hopefully help some of you new uh, musicians out there cut through some of the BS that I think we maybe thought when we were beginner guitarists and musicians. And uh, we're going to talk about some common misconceptions that new musicians have. That's Um, right. So listen up. I want some butts. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) <laughs> and Matt's back with his Top Gun references, folks. Um, so, you know, I, first of all, I want to shout out to our friend Jack at Chiquetto Picks, who suggested this topic. Um, Great topic. I think there's a lot of stuff to, to unpack here. Uh, I know for me personally, probably one of the biggest misconceptions I had when I was starting to play guitar. And I mentioned on a previous episode that, I started out on a relatively inexpensive Yamaha acoustic. And I believed at the time that you had to have a really expensive high-end guitar in order to play well. And there couldn't be anything further from the truth. Um, I mean, I've seen some really amazing guitar players at Guitar Center and other guitar stores pick up a $100 Strat, a Squire, and play phenomenally on it um and really, to your point to your yeah. point uh my hundred dollars strat and the you know we talked about it at our you know first guitar episode mm-hmm. uh definitely remember having my uh dad play the guitar and he's played guitar yeah. for a long time yeah. and it sounds really good and i'm yeah. like i didn't know my guitar could sound like that and then I and I could take it back. And I'm like, oh, it doesn't sound like that when I play it. <laughs> it's I mean, it's true, but when, it's, yeah. it's the it's the skill that goes into playing. Right. Uh, it comes out through the instrument, and right. uh, certainly it, there, there's a reason and a need for expensive gear uh, to sure. a point. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, you're starting out new musician. You don't. It's all about learning the fundamentals, right. learning the basics, making sure you understand what your, how it all works, whatever your right. instrument is. Right. Um, but it, before you, it's worth really investing in a, the next investing, level yeah. or tier of gear. Sure. You know, it's yeah. funny. It reminds me of like a little mini story that when I was in the service, uh, when we were in Kentucky in the middle of nowhere, Okay, we can't reference. can't reference it, but we were literally in the middle of nowhere, and the only entertainment was a Walmart. So we were there for three weeks, and I had to you do were, something because you were camped out in a Walmart for three weeks. No, no, no. It was uh, the nearest piece of entertainment. So when we were done our training, <laughs> no, I know. we would have like <laughs> <laughs> we would have to drive a half hour to the nearest nearest like entertainment, which was a which was a super Walmart. So it goes to show like where we really were in the middle of nowhere, but. Uh, some of my soldiers and I were just so bored that when we went, I bought a $50 kid's guitar and they were just like, you know, sorry, you gotta be, you know, joking around type of thing. And guess what? I was jamming out on that little guitar where I had leadership coming over and jamming with us too. So $50 and whatnot, it already has strings on it. Just do a little bit of tuning type of thing and rock out. I mean, we were having a blast throughout the rest of the night until we had to, uh, you know, have lights off, but it was, it goes, it goes to show again, you don't, it's all about, you know, player technique type of thing. You know, mm-hmm. as long as you know, you, you know, how to tune in chord progression. I mean, you could really take anything. I mean, hell you could take a uh, broomstick and put strings on it and, machine heads or do something to it and know how to tune it. it and there fretless. you go. You guys, 
Yeah. It could be fretless guitar. But yeah. Fretless broomstick. Yeah. Fretless broomstick. There you go. An FB. Not and Facebook. So follow-up question for that story, Matt. Uh, what happened to that guitar? That guitar ended up coming back to the unit, and then someone took it. I was very, wah, very wah. sad. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'll take it as a compliment that maybe it'll be worth money someday. But hey, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> hey, at least but they took was, your fifty dollars Walmart guitar, and you didn't bring like a Gibson with you or something. They took that. I mean, I mean, I'm the day that I find a Gibson that. at a Walmart, that's <laughs> things will fly. <laughs> or you're just really desperate. But hey, you know, for three weeks of entertainment, and that's the closest thing. Why not? Remind you, sure. we really didn't. We couldn't really use our cell phones too, because mm-hmm. even if we tried to, there was no reception. Mm. So it's like yep. no point. Three weeks sure. is a long time. It's not three weeks of like like five Monday through Friday. It's like Sunday through Saturday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, uh, kind of on a, a similar note. So you know, obviously, throwing more money into your equipment isn't necessarily going to make you a better musician, but by the same token, and we kind of talked about this a little bit when we talked about acoustic guitars in our acoustic gear talk, my PSA for that episode was that if you were thinking about starting to play guitar or play an instrument, or you had a child that you were thinking about buying an instrument for, you don't necessarily want to go like super cheap. Like I know Amazon has some cheap guitars and I've seen some videos of those. And if you're just starting out playing going super cheap, well, I, I think the, the kind of thought process there for a lot of people is, well, I'm not really sure I'm going to stick with it or I'm not sure little Johnny's going to stick with it. So I'm not going to spend a ton of money on it, but if it's not, somewhat decently built then it's not going to play very well it's not going to be fun to play and you're not going to want to stick with that instrument so i think there's kind of a good middle ground between going too inexpensive and spending Mm -hmm. way more money unless you just have money to throw away for no apparent reason and if you do then sponsor our show (laughs) <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Over on, over on our anchor page, you can you can yep. donate to sponsor the show. Oh, uh, you can be maybe a host on the damn show. We'll we'll add another person. Why not? <laughs> That's right. Joel sponsor a thousand dollars or more, we'll let you host for a week. <laughs> How does that sound? Uh so yeah, I mean, you know, unless you just have tons of money to throw away for no reason, spending thousands of dollars on a guitar is you're going to be disappointed if you think that that's going to make you sound better. And I mean, kind of on a similar note, another thing that I believed aside from just that I needed more expensive gear was that if I had the same guitar and the same gear as my favorite guitar players that I was going to play like them and sound like them. And that's not really true either. I mean, you might be close mm-hmm. to tone depending on what type of guitar like if you're talking like slash and you know i i did that <laughs> i have a cherry sunburst les paul uh epiphone uh because i'm not <laughs> gibson too expensive uh mm-hmm. no way i'm buying you know that level of guitar but um you know just kind of paying homage to growing up listening to guns and roses that's the motivation for me buying a guitar like that um mm-hmm. and Sure, double humbucker, you're going to get the same Gibson, you know, LP sound, but at the same time, I'm not Slash. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and it, it goes sounds back good to, through a Marshall, I'll tell you, but at right. the same time, it's not going to, you know, it, it's playability, it's it's a, a lot of the, mm-hmm. the skill the behind person. it. Yeah, yeah, it's a whole, it's I a definitely, whole vibe. One, you know, it's funny that we're on this topic because that's how that's how I view signatures, you know, signature guitars out there. Now, don't get me wrong. I definitely highly respect, you know, artists out there that have their own signature guitar, you know, slash has one, Joe Bonamassa has one, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Definitely Ace Freely has, has, has one and whatnot. Highly respect those musicians and whatnot, but are you going to catch Matt Venaria having a Ace Freely Les Paul? Hell no. Why? Because one, I'm not ace freely. So this is, it's, it's almost kind of like a musician type of thought process is that if I want to be ace freely, okay, I'll join a cover band to become ace freely. Okay. In that aspect, 
but if I'm just a regular guitar player or whatnot, I don't, it, it's, it's more like personal preference. Like I'm not going to, I'm not going to be able to, pl- I'm not going to be playing like Ace Freely. Okay. If I'm playing, you know, if I'm jamming out and I got an Ace Freely, Les Paul or whatnot, and I'm using him as a reference that it's not going to, I feel like it's not going to kind of have that same mojo type of thing. So, you know, I personally stay away from like, signature guitars out there only because hey you know that's their tone highly respect it or not but you know from where a musician is especially if you're a guitar player the one thing that guitar players can say is that you know the creativity mind is going on 24 7 okay one pedal can make a huge huge difference and when you're in that aspect that mind aspect you start creating your own type of sound you know our we had harris as a uh, as a guest last year and, you know, I think all three of us can definitely say he's a phenomenal, phenomenal bass player. I mean, this, this kid is absolutely, he's crushing it. Okay. He even says, Hey, he has his own type of different sound. Okay. I think every jam session we have, this kid's always doing something with his pedals. Okay. Mm. Cause that's just how he is or whatnot. Um, but would you see, would you be able to see him being, you know, playing like a rush player? you know, trying to identical. No, because he has that creativity to do that. So, you know, where am I getting with this is that you could be influenced by a musician. Doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be playing like them. Like you could get all the gear and you want, hell you could do go under surgery and look like them. Okay. But when it comes down to technique, <laughs> okay. I mean, it's a lot of studying. It's a lot of self-discipline. And I think that's something that we could jump right into right afterward, you know, into, into the same topic is that, you know, the misconception is just because you have a Gibson Les Paul, say Gibson Les Paul custom doesn't mean that you're going to be this kick-ass guitar player and you're going to go on tour and everything. Hell no. Okay. The guitar is still going to be playing as if it was no, no different than, you know, a five-year-old picking it up. It's all about technique. Hopefully they're playing better than a five-year-old playing an LP, but... Um, unless they're a five-year-old playing unless an LP. Unless they're a five-year-old. And, yeah, on a different oh, yeah. note, on, on a similar note there, because when you were talking about signature instruments, um, I happen to have two uh, signature uh, drum pieces that uh, are coincidentally Chad Smith. And for listeners that don't know, Chad Smith is a drummer of Red Hot Chili Peppers and Mm -hmm. a major band that we wind up playing a lot of songs of. Uh, And so two stories for those two pieces. First one, I have the uh, Pearl Snare, uh, which is his signature, as I said. And I was in Guitar Center looking for a new snare and... I was looking for a darker snare. My my kid is darker in color, so I wanted something to match and uh, looked at the sh- on the different snares. And I'm like, mm, that one. And so got it, brought it home, looked at it. And I'm like, oh, it's a Chad Smith signature. That's awesome. <laughs> that was a mistake. I wasn't really looking for it, but it happened to be and it worked out. Uh, and so that's my main snare right now. And years later, when I was looking for additional symbols. I'm a Sabian guy looking at Sabian symbols, looking for a new China, something beastie. And I saw a uh, the Sabian's largest holy China um, that they offer. And uh, inside the bell, would you look? Chad Smith's signature. <laughs> It's it's coming. I'm eventually the kit's going to turn into a, a chili kit. But I'll tell you, my my ears I just love the sound of that China. I was there for the sound. I wasn't there for the signature. I didn't care who's it didn't have to have a name. I just going for sound, yep. especially on symbols. I'm very picky. Um, but that symbol just worked for me. And I, it just happened to be a, a Chad Smith signature. So now I've got two pieces on my kit that happen to be from the same signature drummer. But by chance, but again, not looking for it, (laughs) it just turned into being that way. I mean, I feel like depending on what the signature instrument is, I feel like in some ways buying a signature drum piece without realizing it is probably a little bit easier than seeing a guitar and not realizing that that guitar is like 
Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to just use the little tiny like miniature yep. base that I've sitting behind me. It's a, uh, it's a fender. Uh, what is this? A jazz base? Looks it's like a P bass. Base. P bass. And it says it's a jazz base. But oh, just kidding. anyway, it's, jazz. it's, it's, it's a miniature Getty Lee bass. And I think anybody who knows rock music and Getty Lee, if they walked into a store and they saw a bass that looked like that, they'd be like, that's a Getty Lee bass. Maybe a little less obvious than other instruments like okay the little one that's next to it the dave mustaine dean v which has a ton of like what is this guy it's got their uh who's their mascot there i forget the name of their mascot but it's got like a clearly a megadeth image on it and i've seen this guitar i saw this guitar hanging in that um that music store i talked about that's in upstate new york the was it uh Dicks, guitars, and guns, or whatever that place is. That oh, yeah. their sign was like a thousand guitars and a thousand guns. I guitars walk in there. They, guns. That's right. And a gas station, so you can grab a sandwich while you're at it. Um, so, you know, I walk in there. They've got this Mustaine V in there, and I know that that's a Mustaine V without like having to look somewhere and see on the price tag or whatever that that's a Dave Mustaine signature model. So I feel like when it comes to guitars. If you're buying a signature model, you're probably well aware that you're doing it in a lot of cases. Whereas like, I, I think it's kind of interesting how you went in. You're like, Hey, I like this snare drum. I like this symbol. And you had no idea. Until and then you no got idea. Them yeah. And they took yeah. it home and I'm like, Oh, but that's awesome. Yeah. I like that guy, yeah. <laughs> but it so, is different because drums are very much hidden. It's not sure. center state. It's not a center stage instrument. It's not something you're, you're leaning over the crowd mm-hmm. doing. You're, you're hanging in the back and wailing away and people in the back sure. are only seeing arms flying around. Like, sure. I did know. that. I did that one time at guitar center. I picked up, I was real. I was thinking about getting a, uh, uh, Les Paul black beauty with three yeah. humbuckers and found out it was a Joe Bonamassa signature. Oh, really? In a way. Huh. Oh, so again, kind of went back to my store. I'm like, oh, so you decided not to buy it because it Just was because the Joe Bonamassa signature. signature even I, I you did. The I'll guitar. fully admit it. I'll fully admit it. Hey, listen, okay. growing up and I, and you know, and, and you guys know, you know, I, I sometimes like to customize my own guitars type of thing. And it's, and we've heard about your acoustic with the, the acoustic, the, oh. <laughs> the asshole. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, oh, here. Right here, look. Oh. It's my own custom telly. See, that looks pretty cool. Is that new? I, I like that pick guard. No, I, no, I made, I made this like years ago, but like. Oh, really? Okay. But if you saw, like, I didn't sign it, but I had, oh, I, I had see. Like, okay. So MCV for the one listeners up, only, it's a black uh, Fender Telecaster with uh, black and white, what I would can only describe as, uh, Candy cane, stripes. candy cane stripes but it's just black and white uh, right. on a black body and silver uh hardware silver hardware it's pretty nice oh look oh, it's got a little the back's got a burst like a tobacco uh, yes. burst and what i did was is because i want to make this I, this was around the time where i was being i was really being creative with like monotone pickups so i took out the jack that was right here okay you're good at leaving holes the in your mono, guitar. <laughs> took out the mono. Yeah, I have a little bit of a guitar. I love a hole. <laughs> and actually, I played this at a show, and I dropped it, and something, and something hit it right here. I was pissed off. But anyways, so I took out the mono tone, the tone now to right here, turned it all the way, buried it in, and I took the jack, and I flipped it to right here. So back in the 70s, and probably you can correct me if I'm wrong, but Telly's used to have the jack on the top of the body versus the side of the body. Now I was really, really in, 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 intrigued by that. So kind of taking the same, same idea, a little bit different with like, you know, the Tom DeLonge signatures where it's just the one volume. Okay. I just wanted to play with one volume and switch with the different tonalities, but yeah. Was that so a kid guitar t- or is huh? that a, is that a real f- telly that you want to modify? Yeah, it's a kit. A kit book. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's a kit, but I bought I bought the neck separately. Mm-hmm. And this one was originally a so this is a squire neck, I'll fully admit it, I but I sanded it down. Sand. Oh yeah. Because I mean you could see it's this it's made in Korea. Crafted in China. China. See why. It's um, reading the serial number. 
<laughs> but what I think at that time, you know, it was, you know, I was getting really serious with, you know, my music career type of thing. And felt like I was playing a lot of shows back then and bands that I was like, Hey, you know what? It'll be nice to kind of have my own signature type of thing, you know, why not? So things like that happen now, but, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's just, cool. that, that, that's just an example, but that kind of goes back to what I was saying about like, again, I'm not Joe Bonamassa. I want it Master. to be my signature. I don't want anyone else's signature. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Play like I just, <laughs> I just think it's funny that you like that guitar. And then as soon as you found out that it was a Joe Bonamassa signature, you were like, eh, never mind. It's uh, yeah. It's I don't <laughs> know. It's it, 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 it's not really like ego. It's I think it's just like like there's a reason why it's a signature. Okay, and again, highly respect artists that have signatures out there. I mean, hey, power to you. That's friggin' awesome. But unless I'm playing in a cover band or playing songs that are related to that guitar. I mean, the audience has got to know, like, oh, if you're playing a Joe Bonamassa, okay, guitar uh, song, it'll be nice to kind of think, oh, if you're going to play like him, maybe try to have the tones like him, maybe try to have the look like him. I don't know. You never know. It all it's, it's so all some preference. here is another proponent for a signature because it's thought of signature drumsticks. Because when we reference drumsticks, yes, there are a bunch of different sizes, and mm. each of those artists work with the drumstick manufacturer obviously like any signature you work with the manufacturer you come up with this design style feel whatever that works for the artist hence the signature mm -hmm. um and it's always interesting to go into guitar center has a bunch and this you can buy plenty more online but depending on or if there is an artist that uh you're like like for me, Chris Adler is one of my favorite drummers and uh, drummer for Lamb of God. And he has his own signature uh, drumsticks through Promark. And so I've been on the every time I'm out in the guitar center, I'm like, yeah, I happen to have Promark because I just want to see them. I, I want to see what they feel like, because I know my hands are going to be different than his hands. Sure. And everything's about the feel. But at the same time, I kind of want to see what what works for him, because I do respect his drumming and play style. And I do <laughs> I have played along with hours worth of, uh, you know, playing along to his drums um, mm -hmm. just in my own practice so having something that would just you know be something that he stands behind and would use i'd be just curious uh to know what that feels like um be, and so that that's one thing that would appeal to me in terms of a signature that i would go seeking for because and i still haven't gotten up my hands on a pair um just because i haven't pulled the trigger to order online 13 bucks like i just haven't done it but um you know, but that's something different. I think you can go to a store and pick up a signature guitar and play it, try it, and you can just put it away. You don't have to buy it. Um, I, I feel like drumsticks, to an extent, you you kind of need to play with them for a little bit. It's like guitar picks. Right. It's you you kind of need to put in some work on them to see how they feel and if that's even something you know if it's going to be a good fit for you or not. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean kind of consider, at least guitar though i feel like you play guitar for a few minutes and you kind of get a feel kind of for what it's going to do yeah, Not, i mean you it's don't more need than to just spend, like picking like, it up too it's the feel yeah, of it as well yeah you don't need to take it home to figure it out and return it mm. later it's a little different experience well even i mean you play it in the store you get it home and it's not necessarily going to sound the way it did in the store either, unless you brought in your own amp and everything because yep. presumably they're not going to have the same amp like for me clearly I'm playing a, vent, a vintage Fender amp through a vintage Fender cab. The chances of them having an actual like same kind of amp in the store are probably slim. Instead, they're probably what they're probably going to do if you're in like Guitar Center or something is they're going to try to get you to plug into the big old Marshall half stack that they have over on the other side of the room because they're hoping that you're going to buy that sucker after you play through it and. Mm -hmm. I don't own a Marshall. I never have. I have nothing against Marshalls. I just like, I'll play them if I'm in the store and I want to play guitar and that's what I get set up with. But I have really at this point, no intention of buying a Marshall, but you know, you go into a store and they're going to try to 
If you don't have a preference, they're going to try to drive you to the gear they want you to buy, you know? So, um, but you know, you play around for a while and you get home and it's still going to sound different than it did in the store because you're using different, a different amp and different equipment. You've got your own pedals and you probably don't, I mean, actually there are some people I think that do bring their pedals and their own cables into the, into the store because they want to hear what the guitar that they're playing is going to sound with like with some of the equipment that they own. But, um, I mean, that's a whole other aspect of it too. And I'm sure, I don't, I don't know, like a guitar center. So are you not able to, if you have sticks that you're interested in, presumably they aren't going to let you just bang around on a drum set with those sticks because you're going to like chip they, them up and whatnot and they can, can't sell yeah, them. Absolutely. Well, you have to so make sure you that you're a drummer too, because if you're a guitar player, they're going to kick you out. <laughs> <laughs> yes yes they know we you don't belong this. Yep. i told I you I'll get you, I'll get you in next time <laughs> you gotta bring here. a drummer with you if you want to enter right. the drum room i always Swat felt weird walking to the drum room at guitar center because the one in natick i'm pretty sure if you needed to use the restroom you had to go through the drums to get to it so it was like if i if i need to make a pit stop on the way i was walking through there and even just walking through there i felt weird about it because it's like <laughs> oh, okay so thank you i'm not the only one <laughs> yeah, no, no. It's. I mean, they got their own room. It's a. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like walking into a wrong the club. club room. It's a cool club. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Learn a cool <laughs> instrument and you can come in. <laughs> oh, man. Here we go. This show might get political. Watch out. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So I. I was going to ask Matt another question, but that probably goes down a road that <laughs> takes no, us to a totally Shoot different show. Well, <laughs> my question was going to be what your thoughts are on the Randy Rhodes Flying V then, because technically that's a signature model, but it's not really like that's just okay, the so style. my thoughts on the Randy Road. Okay. I mean, which you probably wouldn't own one anyway, would be my guess. No, I think with for Randy though, and again, this is just going to be an opinion. The guy was a phenomenal guitarist. Okay, uh, really one one of his one of his kind. Okay, um, but for God's sake, leave the guy for leave him. A, let the guy friggin' rest in peace, man. I feel like the signatures and whatnot. They're 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 making a profit off of him just because of his name. So my thought process on that is like, okay, that's great. But we see on a continuous basis that the Randy Rhodes signature, okay. Is always happening. You'll always find him in, um, you know, like, a American music supply catalogs or guitar center or anything like that. Okay. But, what about the other guitarists that are no longer here that were just as phenomenal? Okay. Gary Moore. Okay. <clears throat> who was a guitarist for thin Lizzy. Okay. Phenomenal guy for a phenomenal guitarist. No longer here. Listen to his stuff. Okay. They came out with the signature of his Les Paul. I want to say for a couple of years, it's just run. And now it's like, it's like cut off. You can't even find that signature guitar anymore um but randy Rhodes, you see randy road guitars all the time and the guys hasn't been here you know passed away a long time ago but there i want to say they're like and there's even guitars that are no longer with us that they haven't even still acclimated to even having signature guitars i'm still waiting okay for the news for Fender to come out to Fender for Fender to collaborate with Gibson to come out with a Terry Kath Les Paul, the pig nose Les Paul. Uh, I'm sorry, not, 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 not Les Paul. Uh, the pig nose Telecaster. Why Terry Kath, another great guitar player. Okay. He, Jimmy, J Jimmy Hendrix said one time that he was influenced by Terry Kath. That, I mean, that's Jimmy Hendrix talking about Chicago's old guitar player. And the reason why I'm saying Fender and Gibson to collaborate is because <clears throat> Terry Kath used a Gibson humbucker on, he switched out for a Gibson humbucker on his Telecaster. So in order for that to have the rights, I'm only thinking that maybe licensing would, would need to happen. Either way, we still haven't seen 
signatures, the signature guitars that phenomenal players have that are no longer here, um, still not be released or even commercialized, but there's only particularly one. And let's use Randy Rhodes again, phenomenal guitar player, whatnot, but that's, I feel like that's a guitar that's always being profitable. Something that's always being like, Oh, this is a Randy Rhodes guitar. Let's go ahead. Let's sell it out and get some profit on it. Versus there are other guitar players out there that are no longer with us that are just as good. I'm not going to say as or better because every guitar player is, is, is phenomenal. It's a, it's a respect thing. Um, their guitar, but their guitars that are no, they're not even the were in production are no longer in production or haven't even been made. So that's probably so, my, that's my thoughts on that. Let, let me ask you a follow up question. Then I feel like sure. we've gone down the road of like A and R reps here, and we've now found Matt's oh niche that'll. Um, so I mean, how much of it do you think though is that the Randy Rhodes guitar does well because that body shape is particularly unique as opposed to like a Gibson Les Paul? Yeah, they can make a signature model, but for the most part, that body style is a Les Paul is a Les Paul. They can change the components in it, but the the body shape is going to be the same pretty much regardless. The Randy Rhodes V, there's not really another... Like you can't really associate that style body with any other guitar. So I guess my question is like, is that really technically a signature model guitar or is that a regular guitar in Jackson's lineup that just kind of became associated with Randy Rhodes because he played one and it just kind of stuck. And now that's the Randy Rhodes. Beat. So chiming in same concept, same the Dimebag Daryl and Dean I was guitars. About yes. to think that because yes, the they don't make signatures necessarily. Mm. It's the guitar brand style, and right. that's what he yep. played. Yep. And everyone knows a Dean because right. of Dimebag playing it. Mm. Or is a Dean? But it's yes. not a signature. It's a brand. Right. But that shape. brand. But that shape. You see it. You're it's like, oh man. You don't even need to see the art on the guitar it's or true. the color of it. You just see the silhouetted. Yeah, the outline shape. of that guitar and yeah. you know that's a dime bag daryl or that's a randy rhodes mm -hmm. but if you saw the same thing for a strat or a les paul you couldn't necessarily associate that as like that's associated with a certain artist so i feel like it's maybe not so much a signature model as much as that shape has just become it, it could like, but it kind of and this is where i'm thinking that like maybe it defeats the purpose of the actual guitar itself because say you have the flying V right. And yeah, everyone. So everyone that sees a flying V is instantly going to think of Randy Rhodes because yeah, he did play it one at one time. I thought at one, I thought at one time when I saw a Gibson flying V or an Epi flying V, okay. That it was a Randy Rhodes. Okay. Obviously I was clearly wrong, but that was the thought process that I knew Randy Rhodes played a flying V not necessarily that specific one or that specific brand. Now to Ted's point with the Dean guitars, the, the, with the, with the Dimebag Daryl signatures or whatnot, I want to even say that even after that guy, even after Dimebag, okay, got murdered that his guitars blew up. Okay. There was start, there was starting to have variations of Dean, of Dean guitars, blowing up left and right. I mean, there was like a cameo one. There was, um, uh, what else was there? What else was there? There was a, a lightning bolt, a lightning bolt one. Okay. So I feel like some of these manufacturers or whatnot that I want to say it's like a profitable, a profitable scheme. So and I can only think that like, when I, when I think of those guitars, and again, this is probably just my opinion or whatnot. When I think of a flying V or whatnot, I'm thinking of the actual, like a Jackson brand. I'm not thinking unless it's specifying Randy Rhodes. So if I saw a flying V from Jackson, I'm going to think it's, oh, it's a Jackson flying V. Unless it specifies and says, oh, it's a Randy Rhodes signature Jackson flying V. You know, you See, know what I mean? A, there's a difference between a flying V and a Randy Rhodes V though. The sh they're, they're not actually the same shape. The Randy Rhodes V has a shorter, one end of it is shorter. So for me, if I see the V that's got a shorter end, that's always a Randy Rhodes V. 
And, and it's just, I mean, that's what they call them, but that's just, I connotate that with a V. If I saw a full, full size flying V, I'm not associating that with Randy Rhodes or really any other particular guitar right. player, but that and half V is and, Randy and, you know, Rhodes. It's, it, and it kind of brings up a good concept too, is that, you know, if you're a guitar player or whatnot, and if you know, or you're a musician that each guitar, actually not even so much, maybe guitars, let's talk about just instruments in general, that there are very, there are a lot of strong uh, specifications to a guitar. So take, for instance, like you were mentioning the, the Randy Rhodes flying V is a lot shorter because that's a specification. Um, say Ace Freely's Les Paul, okay, has three humbuckers, okay, but they're specialized different type humbuckers. Uh, you have a Jimmy Page uh, Les Paul, okay, that one of them is open coil, uh, one of them is open face, while the other one isn't. Okay, so I think it also depends on the specifications of what makes the signature as well. Again, everyone's different. Everyone could have, unless you, unless you know those specifications too. Sure. I mean, I, I get that, but my bigger point was that the shape of the body is the biggest difference that kind of distinguishes that as that's a Randy Rhodes. And all the people who play Les Pauls, yeah, the components are different, and that makes that a signature model or whatever type of Les Paul it is, but the body shape is always the same. So yeah, it's, it's a silhouette I, I wouldn't necessarily look at a Les Paul and be like, oh, that's an Ace Freely Les Paul, or that's a Joe Bonamassa Les Paul. Quite honestly, I probably wouldn't have a clue because there's not anything real distinguishing about them. And just especially like, at a distance. <laughs> Right. Mm. And just like if I saw a, a strat, I wouldn't necessarily con like make the association that that's a signature model with a certain artist unless it was say a Stevie Ray Vaughan strat, because now they have the SRV usually in the pick guard the pick, because yeah. that's what he had. So, you know, for, for me, it's like, there are very few guitars that the shape of the guitar makes me associate that guitar with a particular musician that the dime bag daryl is another one i really can't think of too many other guitars other than the randy Rhodes v and the dime bag guitar that if i just saw the shape of the guitar i would be able to associate that with an artist without knowing other things about it like okay yeah, i see where you had getting that sort of so i mean but but going back to another comment you made about how um the manufacturers, you feel like they're kind of profiting on, on the death of a musician. I mean, a few months ago <laughs> or last year, when was it Eddie Van Halen passed away? Was that last year or the year before? Uh, I think it was, I think it was last, last year. year. I think it was last so, year. Yeah. The PV 5150 amps. I was in, I'm in a few uh, gear groups on Facebook and I remembered seeing a bunch of people that shortly after Eddie passed, they started trying to sell their 5150s at ridiculous prices. And there were people that were commenting that were like, you're not going to get that money for this. It's ridiculous what you're asking. You're only asking that much because Eddie passed away and you're marking it up. And there was a lot of that. So, I mean, I don't think it's just limited to guitars where people will buy because a musician is no longer here. It like effect pedals, amps, any of that stuff. Like people, I, obviously I think people did pay the prices that were being asked for some of those amps, but they were outrageous prices. Um, mm. So on that point, of, uh, mm. I'm on Dean's website right now. Yeah. They have a dime bag series guitars. And granted they have their regular guitars, which, already have similar shape but these mm -hmm. are the dime bag series guitars there are 16 models on the website right now wow 16 16 different kinds okay. it's 2021 <laughs> 16 so, I mean, different versions them, that's that's to to dean that is the randy Rhodes v of jackson the dime bag daryl guitar it's a unique shape mm. it's about the shape i don't know i've never uh, Full disclosure, in case you guys don't remember, and for the, the audience out there, because I don't know if we've talked about this on any previous shows, I have a Randy Rhodes Flying V. I've had it for 
years. I've had it since high school. I didn't buy that guitar because it was a Randy Rhodes Flying V. I bought it because I thought it had a cool shape. I liked the color of it and it was cool. <laughs> and I liked the sound of it, but it never crossed my mind when I bought it that like, I don't consider that a signature model to, to me. So I, I feel like we veered down into a totally yeah. different we were show in a topic, different topic than what we started at. That's <laughs> right. <what> we, <laughs> I mean, we could probably have just spent a whole episode talking about our thoughts signature on guitars. signature models and yeah. what makes a guitar, a guitar. Uh, but, um, anyway misconceptions of new mu new musicians restarts that's right well um, i mean it, it, so, i guess uh, it kind of ties the show in. is called distorted opinions <laughs> yeah i mean it started with does owning Playing a along guitarist's with... signature model yeah. make you sound like that guitarist and i think the answer that we have concluded is no not um, necessarily <laughs> um you know, if you want to own one, that's great. If you don't want to own one, that's great too. For me, for a long time, I wanted the ESP Kirk Hammett KH2. At the time, that thing was like $2,200. Now it's almost double the price. I will probably never own one. Um, never seen it. Took, well, uh, I think the. I think if I was going to get an ESP, I'd I'd want an Eclipse. That's what I've actually wanted for a long time. I'd get a USA model Eclipse, and that would be my big spend on an ESP guitar, but, uh, I don't, <laughs> I don't have that kind of money to spend on a guitar and I never have, which is why I haven't owned one. And there's no way that my dad was going to spend that kind of money on a guitar for me when I was first learning to play. I did play one at Mars music. If you guys remember when oh, that was remember around Mars. the one up in Framingham. Yes was on the border, Natick Framingham border. So it was like you hit Mars music and then you have five minutes up the road in your guitar center and you just make a day of it hitting the music stores. <laughs> Those were good times. Those um, were the days. <laughs> they were. Oh. Um, but they had a, a Kirk Hammett cage to an ESP and apparently weren't real concerned about putting it on the top shelf where people couldn't reach it without help, which is what I think a lot of music stores would have done. You'd have had to go ask. And so I did get to play one and, um, I'm glad that was the era of like, you actually went into a music store. There wasn't a whole lot of going online and ordering a guitar and having a guitar shipped to your house. It was pretty much, you had to go to a music store. And I think if I had been living in the era of you could order something online and I had that kind of money. I might've ordered one online without ever playing it, but being able to play it in the store, I quickly realized, well, <laughs> I don't play anything like Kirk. I don't sound like him. I can't play like him playing this guitar. It's a nice guitar, but it's a lot of money for me to not get what I thought I was going to get out of that guitar, which was that it was going to make me play better and play like Kirk. Um, so I guess that was kind of like, that was where I was going initially with the, uh, signature model thing is that owning a signature model guitar is not going to make you play like that musician, unless you've right. got the skill set, And then, yeah, you might be able to make the, make yourself play like them, sound like them a little bit more, but I was just starting out and there was no way did not matter. Was not going to play like Kirk did not have the skills, still don't have the skills, but definitely didn't have the skills back then. So, um, just to tie that into where that whole conversation went with the, uh, with the signature model thing. But, um, no, I, I think uh, from a new musician standpoint, um, hmm. and it, it, it takes longer to get good, if you will, hmm. uh, than, anyone always expects or you realize right but at a certain point if you're continually practicing uh all you know just a bit every day just a bit every day 20 Makes minutes which is what our uh, late music teacher always told us um you know that will certainly give you the tools in uh, provide you know you'll learn the muscle memory and whatever it is to uh, become good at the instrument Mm -hmm. And, you know, but you just have to take it one day at a time um, right. yep. for quarantine uh, this past year. I picked up a cello. So speaking of picking up a new instrument, new, new. Nobody's got more expertise on this topic because <laughs> I just did it last okay. year. Um, right. And, you know, I've always loved cello and the, the range that it has 
really really cool sound uh, and i'm He's like, talking about the instrument cello not lemon cello for those that are thinking I, I, i'm okay I'm glad yeah, no. we clarified that okay. <laughs> just in case there was any confusion yeah hey, you it, never know hey you know uh, what so, is he talking about a cello are you talking about a lemon cello or lamb lamb cello no cello and not talking about jello either uh, not talking about jello <laughs> jello so, cello anyway the looking for, for uh the instrument it's usually a pricier instrument to jump into um mm. and they have different sizes i wanted a full size so a four four scale uh cello and um so wound up finding one um for sale on facebook marketplace uh and four hundred dollars which to be fair i was looking to spend about three hundred dollars three to four hundred so that was really a, so right in the price up. range uh, because you can go well over a thousand dollars oh sure uh, um so lucked out has a case you know everything it plays well uh the guy was able to play a little bit for me just to <laughs> try to show it what it can sound like mm -hmm. um because goodness knows i never even put my hands on one before and uh got it home and you I found some songs to play along to and because i already have the understanding of guitar and stringed instruments and it, it is a lot easier the hard part is the bow and the fretless uh, and knowing where the note would be uh, on a fretless instrument. So, you know, that's, it's a learning curve. And um, it take, you need to take it out and play it. Um, and so I did a good job of doing that for a little bit. <laughs> and then one day uh, it went in the case and it hasn't come out yet. Um, unfortunately, that's on me. It's just in the corner. I, it's easy access. It's not like it's tucked away in a closet or anything. It's just a matter of having the time at this point to open it up and to take mm -hmm. it out to play. But it is about dedicating the time to get better at, at the instrument and just chip away, like I said, 20 minutes a day. So I need to be better at that. Um, I find myself going back to guitar or drums or, you know, things that I, you know, don't want to lose the touch with, but at the same time, uh, learning something new at the same time. I, I love that I have it. I have some songs that I play along to. Um, and I, I think it sounds really good. Uh, I'm not going to be performing in the Boston pops or anytime soon or anything like that, but, uh, never say it, never. I, I kind of, <laughs> this is true. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it is, it's a, it's a struggle. And especially if you're learning a new instrument, you just need to, uh, put it in your calendar, time manage yourself just to put the time in of because that'll, that'll pay the dividends. Well, even if you've been playing the instrument for a while, it's all about continuing to practice because I mean, it doesn't take much, at least I speak for myself. Maybe this isn't the case for everyone, but if I go for even a couple of weeks without playing, I notice a difference when I pick up my guitar again, it's like I lost a whole bunch of progress if I don't play at least every couple of days, every other day. In an ideal world, I'd prefer to be able to play every day, but that doesn't always happen just because of my schedule. And I'm sure my neighbors would not appreciate me cranking up the amp and the distortion at 11.30 p.m. on a weeknight, uh, especially now that it's nice out and the windows are open if it's not too hot and they've I all got to listen to me. <laughs> we can hear it from all the way out of here. Uh, no, oh, no, no, no. Must be my, my big cabs at your house, Ted, there's no way you can hear my guitar. It's that I need, need that, that cab. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I didn't. Ted would need new windows on his house. Yeah. Both. Hey, that's, that's like not that scene from Back to the Future. <laughs> that's not because of my playing. That's because the low rumble of the bass coming that's from true. somebody else's amp. That's, my yeah, amps the bass are like is a different one, problem. and everybody's like, turn up. And I'm like, but I don't want to blow everybody away. Um, so, anyway, um, you know, for me, it's, I found, and I don't know if it's just my age or just because of who I am, but if I don't play frequently, I feel like I lose a lot of progress and I have to kind of be continuous and I've been playing for a long time. So it's not, not even just new people, but people who've been playing for a long time still need to practice regularly and, and practice the basics and the fundamentals, not just, I mean, it's fun to pull out your guitar and just 
start jamming to songs and stuff, but you got to kind of know the fundamentals if you really want to improve. And you know, one thing that I've found kind of helps me and, you know, Ted, I know you said for your cello, it's not even that it's put away. It's in a case it's in the room. But for me, sometimes even just having to take my guitar out of the case when it's in a case, because I can't necessarily store it with a strap on it. And I can't like, so I have to take it out. I have to put a strap on my strap blocks got messed up on my Parker a long time ago. So now I just use a regular strap. I don't want to have to keep taking it on and off again. And so, you know, typically I don't leave my guitar sitting out anymore. I used to, when I first started playing, I used to have like Matt has behind him a rack for all my guitars and they just sat out and I could just grab one when I wanted to play. And then at a certain point I started keeping them in the case because I wasn't playing them enough. I didn't want them getting dusty. I didn't want them getting knocked over. I didn't want mm -hmm. stuff falling on them. And same I reason why enough. I have the cello in the case. It's a little fragile. Right. It's a wooden instrument. I want it sure. safe. It, it needs to be in the case. Sure. I don't have a display case stand or whatever. Sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, I have found that leaving a guitar out on the stand makes it a little bit more, it makes it a little bit easier for me to have some incentive. If I'm, you know, at the end of the night, I come down here and I'm like, okay, my guitar's there. I'll, you know, fire things up and I'll play for a few minutes and I'll play for like half an hour or something. And then I I've played for a bit and I feel better about the fact that I've at least played my guitar for a little while. And I, you know, got this nice new stand that nobody ever sees if they're watching the video version, because it's kind of hidden below in my, strap is currently caught on it but i got this nice wooden stand from oh, yeah. amazon that. that doesn't have a back or anything so when jam sessions resume i'll have a nice compact thing that folds down that i can bring to put my guitar on because previously i couldn't find any of my guitar stands so i would be either putting this down in the case or precariously leaning it somewhere where i was like oh boy if somebody yeah, walks by that. and knocks that um but, you know, it's kind of in a corner where there's less likelihood that something's going to happen to it, but it's out and it makes it easier for me to play. And um, it's funny because I just had this conversation with my dad uh, last weekend. Oh, really? About that having a guitar in the case is one or an instrument in the case is just the one more step. And it's yeah. like, Duh. it doesn't seem nope. like much. It seems it's ridiculous, but after you have that instrument for a long time and it's yeah. in the case and it's just uh, look, it's it's right there. I gotta take it out of the case. I changed my strings on my acoustic guitar, put it in the case, and it hasn't come out since. Listen, <laughs> that's why I go. I this well, I can, you can only see it a little bit in the in the video, one up, but this rack carries nine guitars, and I have nine yeah. guitars out, mm -hmm. and every day I at least play one of them again, about that 20 to 30 minutes on a minimum. Sometimes mm -hmm. I might go for hours if I'm not on dad duty or husband duty. Um, but you know, I utilize that. You but know, you're also what, for where you're sitting in this, in this picture, you just re reach over and right. it's like, poof, I can grab nine guitars in mm -hmm. without in, in minimal effort. It, it's mm -hmm. just at reach over. And there's one right there. I, right. I have to, I mean, I can you walk know, in the room the and grab down, one, but like open it up, take out yeah. the cello, set up your chair. Yeah, I get it. I get Drop it. Drop the kickstand on it and yeah. Yeah, take the it, take the bow out, oh. tighten the bow tension. Doesn't yeah. seem like much, but by the time you're done, if you have to spend 10 minutes getting ready no, to play, <laughs> you're just yep. like. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I have it in me now. Yeah. It's like playing a game. It's like playing a game on a toilet. It's like, do you really want to stop playing this game, or do you just continuously still sit there and just keep playing and playing and playing? I'm gonna process song what of the, the heck that means. Yeah, song of the week. Yeah, hey, song of the week time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he wants to start. Great segue. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll break the ice. Okay. Um, <laughs> you teach so it this song has nothing to do with obviously our episode, um, but I did reference this soundtrack early last year, um, and I couldn't help I, cu I couldn't let this go with just naming one song off that uh soundtrack i might even talk about this later on in the future but the song of the week i'm gonna be talking about is ted you're gonna like this one the band is il nino oh, nice from the second album confession and the song i'm gonna be referencing is how can i live okay 
heard this for the for, heard this for the first time just like I was listening to uh, when I referenced uh, Kill Switch Engage when Darkness Falls. Oh yeah. Off the Freddy vs. Jason album, this song popped on, and now is it was by far again I'm gonna reference it what I referenced in that episode. By far my favorite soundtrack to a movie because all the bands on there are just phenomenal. But Il Nino introduced me to a whole nother genre of uh, metal music. Um, and just listening to this tune, not again, something that I referenced before is I really, really like and, and attracted to music that is very catchy. It's very melodic. It's got some harmonies to it. And hell, it even has different types of instruments. And Il Nino was one of those bands that uh, I hear congas in it. I hear bongos in it. And I'm going, wow, you mean to tell me we could take some Latin roots and put it into heavy metal and it sounds this awesome? That was the whole beginning to opening up the chapter of being an Il Nino fan and whatnot. But listening to the song, highly recommend it. It's off of the Freddy vs. Jason album, uh, soundtrack album, but it's, and it's also off of uh, the album Confession, which is the second album. It was released in September 30th, 2003, and it's track number two. Highly recommend it. It's definitely a kick-ass tune. Awesome. Boom. Nice. All right. Well, uh, great selection. Also, uh, for because of the strong Latin roots, for the longest time, I thought they were uh, from South America not new jersey mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh that's on that me either. but that's a fun fact they're banned from new jersey um but they they certainly great choice um my pick uh for this week does have some tie to the episode usually my songs not songs usually do um because i'm like that so uh the song uh, I am picking is around the world uh, from oh. the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and yes. it is also my favorite song to do karaoke to. And it's a really fun song to jam to because our friend Chris, our bass extraordinaire, has that flea sound locked down uh, with his effect pedals and things. And um, so, yeah, Around the World is going to be my song of the week and i mean we talked about chilies already the chad the chad smith signatures that i have accidentally that i really enjoy uh just happen to work out that way so not only does that song open up the whole album but i feel like every jam session we always play that and it's always usually in the beginning it's because a, it's, it's, it's a it's like it starts out quiet and then it just goes it just tees you right up to a hundred and you're it just it gets pumped up. It's such a good song. It's like sitting in a roller coaster and just going from like zero to 60 and like 2.3. Like, yeah, it's just like, it's we all like the it way down. like a hot dog when you're on the, on, on the roller coaster. <laughs> Maybe just you. I don't know. <laughs> I had a reference so, Robin Williams. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, so oh, yeah, man. so that uh, are all around, no, all around the world. That's the words, not the name of the song. Around the world is the name of the song. Uh, that came off of the 1999 album Californication, uh, which I bought the CD in, the, in that time. I, I had that for ages. But uh, yeah, my song of the week. Awesome. Uh, I like well, it. Before I go into my song of the week, oh, we you know, spiel. the usual spiel. Uh, so if you're new to the show or you've somehow missed this segment of our previous episodes, we have a Spotify song of the week playlist. We put all of our song of the week picks into that in their entirety. If you would like to check that out, we put the link in the description of every episode, or if you're watching the video version of the show, we've got a special Spotify QR code that we'll put on screen. You just open up the Spotify app on your mobile device, and in the little search bar where it's got the camera, you click on that, hold your phone up to the screen, scan the code, and it'll take you right to the playlist. So we will put this week's picks in there. You can also check out our previous picks if you haven't heard those yet. And uh, with that, uh, continuing with the Chili Peppers theme, inadvertently, oh, uh, what do we got? My my pick really it it didn't necessarily have anything to do with the theme, but it's just a song that I've always liked by the Chili Peppers, and I've been listening to it more recently. And that is Danny California off of 2006's oh. Stadium Arcadium. Um, 
and like Matt, and I, I think we've talked about this, you know, on a couple of shows now, I am not a lyrics person. I am a, I hear the song, and if it's got catchy guitar, or there's just something about it that I like, I like it for that reason, not because I listened to the lyrics and either liked or disliked the lyrics. So it wasn't until I was looking today to, you know, have some things to talk about when I talked about this song that I discovered that apparently this song is about Danny, who is a character that appears in several Chili Peppers songs. I guess uh, Danny first made an appearance in Californication and then in By the Way. And in this particular song, Danny is a poor girl from Mississippi who moves to Southern California. She becomes a mother, leads a hard life, and ends up um, dying young when she's killed by a police officer in North, North Dakota. So I like somehow I knew those lyrics were there, but they never registered with me until I read that. And I was like, oh, boy, this is kind of a dismal song. Um, and apparently Anthony Kiedis, the singer of, of Red Hot Chili Peppers, has stated in some interviews that Danny is a compilation of a number of his ex-girlfriends from over the years. So I mean, it all makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what I like most about this song is actually the solo at the end of it, which for some reason, it's always struck me as a heavy solo, even though I don't necessarily associate the chili peppers as being a heavy band for the most part. Like, I, I don't know. I just, in comparison to what I typically listen to, they're not considered a heavy band, but this particular song, that solo has always oh. been like, from the moment I heard it, I'm like, wow, that is a heavy solo. Um, he kicks that. It's almost like a distortion and a fuzz going right into it. Like, mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. So it's funny that you should, um, that you should hum that because for the tech gear nerds out there, one of the things that I discovered and I never put two and two together. So uh, they used a number of different effects to achieve the sounds throughout the song, including a Mellotron, Moog effect, pedal, a dope for modular synthesizer, um, which was used for filtering and processing the pre-recorded tracks. And then the guitar solo was actually an adaptation of Jimi Hendrix's solo to Purple Haze and the effects they use were used to keep that sound very close to the sound that Jimmy had in that Purple Haze solo. So it's kind of funny that you hummed that because it sounded like wow. Purple Haze when you hummed it. Um, it really did. Yeah, I was like, huh, no, well, that's ironic. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot going on with that song. Apparently there were some claims that the song was a ripoff of Tom Petty's Mary Jane's Last Dance, which... Maybe that's why like Kita says ex-girlfriends. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I mean, I hear the similarities. The last dance, she's dead. Ooh. Maybe that's a dead chick. I mean, yeah, the claim <laughs> is that the lyrics also kind of overlapped and the, the album, the, the producer of the album also produced the same, uh, the album, Tom Petty's album that Mary Jane's Last Dance was on. So there's a lot of people that are like, okay, the lyrics, the sound, like it all sounds pretty similar. I didn't really make that connection until I was reading that. And even then, in my mind, I don't really, I don't hear either of the songs and think like, oh, well, Danny California sounds like Mary Jane's Last Dance. They're not at all the same song, in my opinion. But we could probably spend an episode with a couple people who might have a differing opinion just discussing that. Um, but anyway, just a really cool song. Really love the guitar solo on that. Uh, I can't imagine there's anybody out there that hasn't heard it, but if you haven't heard it, Danny California by the Red Hot Chili Peppers off of Stadium Arcadium, that is my song of the week pick for this week. I feel like so, I can't end this episode with having two chilies noted, so I have to do an honorable mention chilies just to make honorable it. Honorable mention, incoming. Honorable oh. mention chilies is going to be, and I was talking about this before, mm -hmm. um, song actually off of Stadium Arcadium, Strip My Mind an underrated tune also another phenomenal song that has great guitar work to it um again one of those tunes that you know for shawnee it's, it's it's a very chill tune um very mellow something that's a little it's it's definitely chilies but it's to a brand new level it still makes it happen but uh for shawnee's got like this nice soul type of with a little bit of uh you know blues uh, guitar work 
behind it. It's very, it's very like very relaxing. So that's going to be the honorable mention of uh, strip my mind from chili peppers also off of uh, stadium arcadium. All right, there we go. We get a, a full three pick for chili peppers. I mean, we're, we're mm-hmm. sort of fans. It's, it's cool. <laughs> Just a little good. bit. It's all good. All righty. Well, on that note, um, you know, we'll, we'll do the usual end, end spiel as well. Uh, perhaps you have some suggestions or some thoughts, some misconceptions that you had as a beginning musician that you'd like to share with us. Uh, feel free to reach out. Or if you've got a, a show topic idea for us, uh, you know, Jack reached out and said, Hey, I think this would be a good topic for you guys to talk about you can get in touch with us. There's a few ways you can do that. You can head to our anchor page at anchor.fm slash distorted opinions. We've got links to all of our social media profiles, as well as a partial list of the platforms. The show is available in audio only format on, um, as I believe Ted also mentioned in the, uh, the electronic drum gear talk. And I'm not always good about reminding people about this. If you're an audio listener, we have a YouTube channel. We put all of the shows up in video format. If you want to watch any of the shows to see some of the things that we sometimes reference that, uh, that you can't see if you're listening or maybe you just want to see who the, like Matt's custom telecaster are. that he just pulled out in the that's middle right. of the episode. Like that's, that's something or, or the miniature, uh, <clears throat> guitars that Caleb pulled out earlier in the beginning of the that's right. conversation as well. It's all that's on right. snow. Yep. There is so, no exception to the misconception, but there is exception to nasty erection. Uh, <laughs> record scratch. <laughs> We're not addressing that. Okay. And so the other way that you can reach out to us is via email. And our email address is distorted opinion show at gmail.com. Matt finally got the email address right, but um, hey, we're, you, we're in a brand new year. I'm totally graduated from that. From that, but you've moved on to now you can't get the anchor URL right because as people will find when they see the next gear talk, Matt yeah. flubbed oh, sneak on the anchor gets URL. It wrong. That's, that's right. Do. Yeah. So that's going to be the new thing. It's going to take us the next six months for Matt to get the uh, the anchor address you know, correct. I should just start wearing like one of those like you know, like boy scout, like ribbons. <laughs> You're going to get you patches for getting patches them. for like the graduation. <laughs> and it will, it'll just be a patch of whatever it is. Like the story of like patch. email so patch. patch. Just, uh, just a, a square that says email <laughs> <laughs> right on the vest. And, uh, like a circle one that says anchor FM. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot. Yeah. Yeah. We'll I mean, we could. Yep. <laughs> that'll be for year two at that point you'll be able to put two badges on your best when we uh <laughs> when we get you one so um <laughs> on that note there are your ways to reach us uh you know let us know if you got a suggestion for a show topic or maybe you want to be on a show or maybe you know somebody who might be interested in joining us on a show i know uh gigs are starting to pick back up again for bands and we'd love to uh, have some bands and some musicians on the show. So reach out to us, let us know if you're interested or if you know mm-hmm. somebody who might be. And on that note, we will see you next week with an all new episode. We'll see you then. Later guys. Bye.